Hey, and welcome back to another video. My name's Hayden, and in these videos, we get your children prepared for their 11 plus. And today we're looking at a question type from GL Assessment that we call alphabet code pairs. And as you can see, we've got an alphabet across the top, and it's very crucial we have this. We need these to help us answer these questions. And below, let me run you through what we actually have to do. It says NE, so we got our first code, is to LB as JQ is to something. So what we're trying to do here is understand the link between the complete pair that we're given, and then when we know that link, we can apply it to the start of our next pair, JQ, and hopefully come out with a two-letter code ourselves. Now, looking at this, looks very confusing, very hard to see what the link might be, but it is very much down to the jumps on the alphabet between, or the distance between the letters. And what we need to do, the main strategy here is isolating the first letter, with the second letter. So we just focus on the first letter and then we just focus on the second letter. So let's start with N becoming L. How has that happened? Now this is where the alphabet code is very helpful because I can find N and I can find L and I can think of the relationship between them in jumps. So if I start from N and I jump back twice, you can see I get to L. So the way I might describe this on here, in fact, I'm gonna get rid of these arrows so we've got more space. The way I might describe this is by saying minus two, because I think minus means going backwards on the alphabet, plus might mean going forward. So we've jumped back two, pretty cool. And then we go ahead and we do the same for the second letter. Let's think about E becoming B. Let's find E and let's find B. Is it the same? Sometimes it is. One, two, three, but in this case it's not. So when thinking about E becoming B, I can draw my little arrows like this. I'm gonna put minus three. Now the beauty is, We've done all the hard work now. All we have to do is apply the same thing to our new question, to our new code rather. So J, we know the first letter went back two. So let's do the same to this one, shall we? Here's J, one, two, and we get to H. Now I know my first letter out of the two letters in this code is H. Sometimes if you're really lucky, there will only be one answer that starts with H and you've got the answer straight away. In this case, we can get rid of three of them, which is pretty cool. If we were running out of time right now and we had to take a guess, at least we've got a 50-50 chance from doing this much. Now let's apply the second letter rule to the second letter, and it was to minus three, go back three jumps. So let's find Q and let's go back three jumps. One, two, three, actually gets us back to N, which was a letter that's used before. Don't worry at all about that. And what this has done for us is it's confirmed that the answer is in fact CHM. So as you can see, really systematic, very logical this one. It's all about counting and spotting little patterns between the gaps between uh, uh, different codes, different letters in the alphabet. So let's have a go at another one. This time I think you should pause the video, try to apply what we've just done here, and let's see if anything else emerges, any new rules come out of this. Okay, let's give it a go, shall we? Let's see what happens. So we're gonna focus just on the first letters. All right, we know, we know the strategy now. I becomes L. So here's I and here's L, one, two, three. And I would advise doing this. I would advise telling your children to do these jumps in the actual exam as well and writing all this sort of stuff down. We've jumped three up, okay? Different way of doing it, you can choose which you prefer, is rather than doing the second letter now, we can just jump straight in and just get the first letter done, just be fully done with it. We know it was plus three, so let's do it to D. One, two, three, and we get our answer starting with G. We have a quick look and we go, oh, we couldn't solve it from one, but it was worth a try. And then we focus on the second letter, and it really is up to you whether you like labeling them both first or doing it this way, it doesn't matter. So S to V, let's have a look. S is going up to V. One, two, three, okay, cool. So we're doing plus three on both of them, nice and easy to remember. And now we're faced with our next challenge, our next problem. Why, going up three, we seem to hit a barrier, right? We do one jump and we get to Z and then what do we do? There's no more alphabet. Think of the alphabet like a circle, okay? Z just connects back round to A. It's like an old Space Invaders game where if you go off one end of the screen, whoop, you just come back on the other end of the screen. It's great. So we've done one jump. If we do another jump, imagine it's just jumping now down into A here. So that's jump number two. And what was it? Plus three. So we need to do one more and it gets us to B. Does that make sense, guys? Let's just go over that again. So Y goes one jump to Z, two jumps to A, three jump to B. So very much bear that in mind now for the next questions because you might see a bit more of that. We've got our answer. It was E. Woohoo! Let's have a go at another one. Again, pause the video, have a go using this new strategy. And I'd like to know as well, which way do you prefer doing it? Isolating the first letter and finishing it? or finding the pattern for both. It really is up to you. Have a go. All 
All right, so this time we've got a double letter. It's interesting. Doesn't mean the same thing is happening though. That's really worth bearing in mind. Let's not assume that the same thing happens to both letter. You can clearly see it doesn't because we don't get the same letter in the second instance. So Z becomes W and then Z becomes E in this one. So clearly different. Let's do Z to W. So here we go. One, two, three, gets me back there. I'm gonna go back to my first strategy now. I'm gonna do Z to E as well. Clearly going forwards, because going backwards Z to E would be a really, 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 really long way, wouldn't it? Whereas I can clearly tell now from my last strategy, if I just go forwards, I go one to A, two, three, four, five. Oh, plus five is a lot easier than saying minus, you know, 20 odd or whatever it would have been. So now we've done that, let's apply it to YY. Now something interesting is gonna happen here, isn't it? My, my logic kicks in and says, if it's minus three and plus five from ZZ, I got WE. If I'm now just starting from one letter lower and I'm minusing three and adding five, won't it just be the same as WE, but off by one? Let's find out. Surely it would just be one less or one more than WE on the alphabet. Let's find out. So we're gonna do minus three first to Y. Let's get rid of this. One, two, three, exactly as I expected. Look, it's just one less than where W was because we started at a one, one less point in the alphabet. My prediction is it's going to be D because it's one lower than E. Let's find out, let's go up five. One, two, three, four, five, exactly what I thought D. So sometimes guys, if a bit of logic kicks in, don't be afraid to use it. You know, we, we, there was a, there was, we could have saved some time by just thinking, no, that's definitely gonna happen. Pretty cool. So there we go. Now, in the next question, I've got the possibly the hardest question type of here. No one ever gets it. No one ever knows how to solve the next one. So do stick around. But firstly, parents, if you're still interested and you're still listening, thinking, yes, yeah, this is exactly what my child needs, then please do, with your phone, scan this QR code or check out the link in the description if it's easier. And it will take you to our website where we've got hundreds and hundreds of premium lessons, a bit like these YouTube videos, but even more premium and full length lessons. And every single one of them comes with a downloadable homework sheet, very much like this one. And I pulled some of the questions from today's video from the homework sheet that I created for our premium resources. And if that's not enough, it also comes with answers and another homework video walkthrough of those questions as well. So you get in double trouble. Uh, hundreds on there for year four, year five, and even for year six, if you're thinking about that bit of future preparation after 11 plus, do check it out in the link. Let's move on. Now, let's have a look at this question where something very interesting emerges. Now. All of the strategies we've used so far are not going to be conclusive. They're not gonna be extremely helpful with this one because something new happens here. And do you know what? Before I say anything else, I just want you to have a go. Can you work out the link between FB and UY and then apply that to LD? Have a go. Now, hopefully, hopefully you notice it's a bit odd. It's a bit strange. Something a bit different happens here. Let's just find F and B first. We've got F and B, and that becomes U and Y. Very interesting, so F becoming U seems like it's going to be an enormous jump, maybe even too big. This this rings alarm bells saying, I don't think they'd do this in the test. They wouldn't give me a jump of like 15, surely. And even if I went backwards, it would still be about 10. It's a huge jump. So maybe something else is going on. Well, I'll tell you right now, something else is going on. Let me show you something pretty cool. Did you know that if I were to split the alphabet in half, I would create a line right here. I've got 13 letters on the left, 13 letters on the right. And if you think of this like a mirror, can you see anything emerging right now? What can you, what have you noticed about the letters that we've used here? Have you noticed that B, if this was a mirror, would reflect into where Y's place is, right? You could think of it like this. They're both one away from the other edge. Same with F and U. Look, you could think of it this way as well if you wanted to, if it's easier, how far away they are from the mirror itself. A bit like in maths, if you were doing a reflection, you'd count how many boxes it is away from one side and you'd reflect that on the other side, right? So for example, in this case, if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jumps away from the mirror, I get F. And if I go eight jumps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this direction, I get U. So this is playing off the idea that the alphabet has been split in half and it's kind of like a reflection on either side. How far away is it from the mirror line? How cool is that? So very, very rare um, type of question that, that can come up. I've seen it before, but not very common. So let's have a little look then at applying this and get rid of all these bits here. Let's apply it to our new letters L and D. So we're gonna see where they, where they come up and what their reflection would be. All right, so here's L. Luckily, that's really close. Look, 
one, two away from the middle. So let's do the opposite, one, two, and we get to O. So I know my first letter is O, and as we can tell from four of the answers being that, I can get rid of one of them, it's clearly gonna be O. Now, if we do the same to D, what's easier, counting how far away it is from the center, or kind of looking how far away it is from the other end? I think it's probably this one here, right? It's one, two, three, it's three jumps in from the end. So if I do the exact same thing on this side, one, two, three, I get a W and find out that my answer is O, W. Pretty cool, right? So there you go, super rare question type. It's worth you knowing that this kind of thing comes up when helping prepare your kids for the 11 plus. Let's do another one, shall we? So this one, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd do one more and I'm gonna leave you with one to have a go at in the comments. One more, just a bit of an amalgamation of everything, nice and tricky, just have a go. Okay, so we've got H going to B. Let's go back to the classic here. Unless we think there's a mirror image thing going on, we will assume that it's gonna be jumps. So H becomes B, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm gonna put minus six. I'm gonna do my second strategy now and just apply it straight away to D. So let's get rid of this out of the way and go from D, one, two, three, four to Z, five, six, gets me to X. There's my first letter done. And now I'm gonna go ahead and have a go at the second one. O to S, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna put plus four and apply it straight to this one. You can see we're getting quicker now, right guys? And we're gonna go one, two, three. One more jump will get me to A. We're going to the other side, we get X, A, check it's on there, it is an answer, done. So as you can see, you get faster and faster and faster at these, and you will probably get to the point where your child doesn't even want to write down some of these things anymore. They just start noticing the jumps, they keep in their head, or they might just put six and four, or minus six plus four. They might not do the arrows, because they'll become more efficient, and ultimately that's what we want, because really the aim is to be able to do these questions on average, in about 40 seconds, okay? 40 seconds per question. So why don't you practice that now? I'll leave you with this question right here. There is a sneaky, sneaky little sneaky thing, I've said sneaky too many times, going on in here. I wonder if you can notice a link between these letters and maybe what it spells out. Um, it does mean that one of the jumps is absurdly massive. It's not a mirror thing, I promise, but you know, I just made a really big jump because I wanted to get the sneaky thing in. So let me know in the comments if you've noticed what I've done with the letters I've chosen and also what you think the answer is. Guys, it's been a pleasure. I hope this video has helped you on your journey to 11 plus preparation and smashing the 11 plus. Don't forget to check out the link in the description for hundreds and hundreds of premium resources. Some of them are even free. See you next time.